Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to today's video. We're gonna talk about soil differences. A lot of people, they ask us, hey, we want topsoil put down in our yard, but uh, can you guys do that for us? And then us as landscapers, we're like, well, topsoil, what do you mean? Because there's so many different options to choose from. So let's talk about four of the main kind of topsoils and, and potting soils that you'll find at Lowe's or Home Depot, one of the box stores and uh, see what's right for you guys. We have Jeremy Lowe here, and uh, he's gonna go over the four types of soil that we most commonly find. Let's start with the first one here. Tell us a little bit about this first one. Well, when you go to the garden center and you buy a bag of soil, you're, there's everything under the sun could be out there in that garden center. So the one I'm starting with here is a product that we buy um, this is one of the main ones we use and the reason is is because before we buy a pallet of something to use on our homeowners lawns we're going to open the bag and see what's actually in it and in this particular case this is a really nice very well blended um, mix of uh, native soil sand organic matter and most importantly this contains expanded shale in it and expanded shale is pound for pound the absolute best amendment that we can use in a heavy clay soil. Helps with uh, drainage. It helps increase the amount of large pore space in the soil that allows water to move through it, allows oxygen to be able to be uh, um, uh, taken in by the plant. So this is our favorite. It's got the most uses and is a really, really, really well-made product. Um, I, I, I know these guys personally and I'm really happy with this product. So when people, they ask us, Chorby, to provide topsoil, this is what we're going to provide, right? This is what I would generally prefer to provide. And that's based on some experience. When we just do native soil top dressing in a yard, that native soil could be a number. I mean, soil could mean a lot of different things to a lot of different people. And what we found in the past is that certain soils have too high a percentage of clay so when we top dress it out on the lawn, you'll see that after, if it starts getting dry, that soil cracks. Um, it can sometimes slow down uh, turf grass growth because that soil is so dense that the grass has a hard time pushing back up through it when you top dress. Because of the clay. Because of the clay content. So yeah. this has a really minimal amount of clay content in it um, and a nice friable is what that's called. Um, easy to spread and you don't see a ton of very large pieces of organic matter that look like like mulch What you see in here is very well composted meaning that it's actually going to provide nutrition to the plants um, Where if we move over to this uh, this bag of what's just called topsoil and when you look at it It says amendment ingredients 100% topsoil, but I'm gonna argue with that because when I'm looking at this mix This is why I'd encourage anybody buy a bag and open it up but when you look at this mix, there's a lot of really rough organic matter in here. I mean, this is essentially a mix of a clay loam, or most, I'm, I'm assuming, um, a mix of a clay loam. You can see the big chunks of clay that we took out of it. Oh, yeah, look We're at that. We're just fishing those out of there. Um, but giant pieces of organic matter, which is actually going to remove nitrogen um, from the system because bacteria want to break this down. And why do you want nitrogen for? Nitrogen is what allows the plant to uh, produce new green growth. It's one of the major plant essential nutrients required for growth and is largely responsible for a lot of the green color on your grass. Um, but when we have large pieces of organic matter, soil-borne bacteria want to break this down. They need nitrogen to be able to do that. So until it's composted to a certain level, which is about 15 carbons to one nitrogen, it's actually using nitrogen to do that, which makes it not available for the plants. So if you plant into this, it's very likely that your plant's not gonna grow very well for a while until this composting process is complete. And if you use that for sod installation or something like that, isn't there a chance for the sod not to be able to establish as fast? It, the sod will generally probably not as fast. Yes, that's absolutely right. It could it could delay um, the uh, the sod uh, really starting to thrive, um, just because the fertility's low because we're trying to break down all this rough organic matter. All right. Again, so adding clay to the system is not necessarily anything that we're terribly interested in. We got plenty of that already. All right, and comparing that one with the other one. Comparing this one with the other one, look at the the how coarse the organic matter in that is. Um, there's chunks of clay in it. 
Um, it's just a really rough coarse material that might be okay if you're tilling about four inches of that into a brand new bed and then you're going to let that sit for a while and, um, and, 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 and kind of mellow. Um, this would be okay. It's cheap. Um, and uh, in a lot of cases on soil, you get what you pay for. All right. Very well. Well, let's look at this third one because this one says organic. I mean, aren't they all organic? Yes. Organic means it contains carbon. Um, so an inorganic soil would be just basically a pure silica sand, um, which is used on golf courses. But when I said you get what you pay for, I mean within reason, because I think a lot of what we're paying for on these kind of bags, not this one specifically, no disrespect to Whitney Farms, but a lot of what you're paying on this is the packaging. Um, this is basically just peat moss or the equivalent of peat moss. It's a really light, really soft. There's no soil in this media at all. What's peat moss? Peat moss is just, um, it's, um, it's basically um, aged, compressed organic matter that's dug out of the ground in peat bogs. But this is just old dead plants that have been kind of aged and crumbled up is the best way to put that. Like really um, fine mulch, not really a soil. Exactly. Um, but it's really well composted. That's the good part. But it's so light that if you just put this on top of your beds, your landscape beds, it's going to wash away. If it's not incorporated in the soil, you will find this 200 feet from your house down on the on the side on the sidewalk 200 yards from the house so you pay more and then it just washes away yeah you got a pretty package but this isn't really much different than just buying a bale of peat and putting that in your beds and something like this we would want to incorporate this into the soil it has a lot of really good uses but it's only an amendment um, you can plant into it but I really prefer a container planting mix to have some amount of sand and native soil in it. Not too heavy, not too light. This would be too heavy for a container. Um, by the time you water that and the water drains out, it's gonna really brick up. Um, this is light, it's nice, but it's just a, a light amendment that we might use if we were planting something to incorporate with native soil and then plant back into that plant's root zone. Okay, well that brings us to our potting mix. Indoor potting mix. And why is it indoor? I don't know. I grabbed one of them. miracle Grow makes a lot of potting mixes, and their big claim to fame is that they'll add um, fertilizer into it. But I've always felt like fertilizer is not hard to add into the system. Um, it doesn't have to come in the bag. Um, the main attraction of this material is these little white um, particles in here. This is vermiculite. Vermiculite will help keep the soil mix lighter. It adds some uh, ability to create large pore spaces. And more than anything, it really increases what's called the cation exchange capacity of the soil. That's the, the soil's ability to retain and then release to the plant certain plant essential nutrients like calcium, um, magnesium, uh, potassium. Um, this is a, a great amendment, but you'll find this is another reason to open the bag and check it out. If you can crush that with your fingers and it turns into powder, it's most likely vermiculite or zeolite. Not styrofoam. If, if it just bounces right back and can't be crushed, it's styrofoam. And that makes that one of the cheapest, lowest end types of potting soil that you can get your hands on. Styrofoam is just a cheap filler. Um, so it's really the equivalent of eating sawdust. Um, it's not going to mm. do anything for your plants. It's probably going to blow around your yard at some point. Um, I would avoid anything with styrofoam in it at all costs. So this is mainly used for potting plants. If you want soy, if you ask for topsoil and you're using it for a pot, uh, some, something like that, that's the only really true that's purpose for this. For this kind of material, or you could use it as an amendment if you were planting I would take this, like if you dug out the hole for your new plant, I would take the soil that came out of that hole, mix it with this, and backfill lightly around the plant um, with a, a mixture of the native soil and uh, an amendment, um, and that will help that plant get established. But planting it straight into this, like you would want to mix this with the native soil in a planting situation. If you just backfilled with this, it can happen where the plant prefers this mix so much that it won't grow out into the native soil is a, is theoretically possible. Um, well, very well. So 
when people want a topsoil for their landscape beds, you know, it just has shrubs, maybe some trees, ornamental stuff, no flowers. Why would we need topsoil at all? Why not just use mulch? Mulch is too coarse. For one, like if I was to use this this top this soil here to uh, to top dress low areas of the lawn, what's going to happen most of the time is when it rains, this raw organic matter is going to float, and when it floats to the top, you'll see it, um, you know, first on top of the grass, and then if any surface drainage is causing that water to sheet over the lawn you will find big, long lines of this, like you see uh, sand on the beach. So not good for your grass. It'll just float away, um, and it will create little ridges and ripples in the lawn that now make it uneven. You almost can do just as much harm as good using a material like this that's got a lot of really rough organic matter in it. Um, you want this to be small and fine and be able to be, uh, be incorporated almost to the surface of the soil. So that's good for, you know, landscaping but you don't want it for your lawn i could fathom a reason why i would use this on my lawn unless my dog dug a deep hole and i needed to fill it and even then i don't like this material because as the organic matter begins to decompose it's going to cause this that that to drop when you see soil sink a lot of times it's because it had a high amount of uncomposted organic matter in it that as it composts shrinks down and then it starts to sink so if I use this even to fill a hole, I would plan on going back about three months to six months later and having to do a little bit more to make it level. Which is why here at Chorby, we like the all-purpose planting mix as a topsoil, any kind of soil because it's what, Jeremy, the most versatile, right? It's very versatile. It's, it's really well screened um, and it contains a mixture of organic matter, um, uh, native topsoil that's been screened and uh, an amendment like, um, like uh, what did I say before? Um, expanded shale, sorry. Um, an amendment like expanded shale, which again, pound for pound, is the absolute best soil amendment for a clay soil to help retain nutrients that are, would be available to the plant and increase porosity and water infiltration. So one thing we don't have here in our lineup is sand. Just straight sand. Straight sand that you would find on a beach. What would that be used for? We will use straight sand when, let's imagine that you've put all new sod down and the sod is, is not necessarily smooth on the day that it's installed. It's, it's impossible to get a golf, a putting green level of smoothness on brand new sod. There's variations in the thickness of the soil. There's variations on the surface of the soil. So very often we will do uh, a sod installation and then follow that up sometime after the sod's established with a top dressing of sand. Um, that just helps smooth everything down. You don't want to put that out at more than about a quarter to a half inch. You don't want to bury the grass in it. You just want it. And sometimes that means it takes several different um, applications. You do a little bit, you let the grass grow. You do a little bit more, you let the grass grow. And it can sometimes take a few rounds. If you put uh, too much, it gets hot. The benefit of sand is that um, the right kind of sand, cushion sand, which is that kind of orangey, um, it's got a lot of clay in it. It's a terrible thing to, to put on your lawn. Brick sand or mason sand that's nice and round and smooth. And basically my uh, criteria on that is if you can take the sand and squeeze it in your hand, throw it in the air, if you can catch that again in a ball, it's got too much clay in it. If you throw it in the air and it, it, it diffuses all over the place, it's a nice, smooth, rounded sand. We just like it because it will move through the canopy on that grass and actually reach the soil. It does include a lot of clay. And so it's just a nice, smooth material to be able to distribute and level it out. Um, okay. A lot of folks worry about that causing their, their, their grass to dry out faster, but a quarter to a half inch is not going to affect that. Most of the rooting is happening in the top four inches. So unless you put down four inches of straight sand and then sod it, that's not going to be a problem. The sand just kind of smooths everything out on top. The action is still happening at four to six inch depth where the root zone is. Well, to wrap everything up, describe, if you can, I know it'll be hard, and maybe one or two words, each of these bags, and we'll wrap it up from there. 
Okay. This is this, the name of this one is all purpose planting mix. It's a, um, a nice mix of screen soil, um, organic matter, and a, and a soil amendment like um, expanded shale. A really nice, versatile mix. It's well composted. Regular bag of topsoil is usually going to be one of two things. It is literally just topsoil, and you don't know where it came from. Or it's like this one, which is topsoil mixed with rough mulch um, uh, type material. Again, has a few limited uses. Nothing I would put on my lawn or use in a container. Um, organic potting mix is basically, these are two are very similar. The difference is one has vermiculite and one doesn't. If I was going to choose between these two, like I was potting up a geranium for the back porch, I would use the one that had vermiculite in it. Um, this mix right here is no different to me than buying a bale of peat moss and opening it up and planting something into it. It's probably really acidic. Um, so not all plants are going to love it. It's going to hold water real well, but almost like a sponge. Um, this is the same. Well, thanks guys for watching. That describes soil and tells you what we do here at Chorby and why we like the most versatile product because it goes just about anywhere. So thanks for watching. Y'all have a great day.